Hello, uh, welcome at uh, Edition Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to sciences entrepreneurs. Uh, today, it's my pleasure to receive uh, as a guest uh, Dr. Natalia Mouani Dua. Uh, she's a neurobiologist by training and the founder CEO of DSA, Disability STEM Africa, STEM for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Medicine. Uh, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you very much. How are you? <laughs> Bye, thank you very much. Um, Thank you for being here with us today. Uh, we are very interested by your story and uh, your, your venture. So could you uh, present yourself in a more detail? Uh, and, uh... Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, so thanks a lot. So yeah, my name is uh, Natasha Mwanigwa. I am originally from Zimbabwe. That's where I was born. Um, but I spent most of my childhood in Botswana actually, and then my high school years in Zimbabwe. Um, I did my undergraduate in Cyprus, where I got a bachelor's in human biology, after which I then moved to the Netherlands for my master, and I did a research master's in molecular mechanisms of disease. And now I'm in Luxembourg, currently a third year student, um, where I'm focusing on research. Um, so that's more my academic trajectory. And outside of that, um, in 2016, I co-founded Visibility STEM Africa, uh, which is an initiative that aims to amplify the voices and stories of Africans while within STEM, as you said, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, um, and also to help um, Africans within these fields to get access to resources, uh, opportunities, and to kind of support their career journeys if they choose to be in a particular field. So, uh, Natalia, um, uh, first of all, um, VSA is a, is a startup or is it an association, non-profit association? So, at the moment, it's, it hasn't been registered yet, so technically it's a startup slash association in, in, in progress. Um, so, the idea is that uh, we want to register actually in Luxembourg as an association. Um, that's the okay. ultimate goal. Mm, good, good. So, um, and then, from uh, where this uh, the desire of launching an organization uh, emerged in your mind? Uh, uh, is it was it something that you had in mind at the first year of your of your university, or is it something that you just emerged at the end of uh, I don't know your PhD or? Yeah, so it's an idea that I guess it really came. Um, fruition probably during the first year of my PhD, but I think it was kind of due to the experience that I had had up at that point. So um, as I mentioned, you know, I did this bachelor's in Cyprus and biology, then this master's. Um, and of course, I'm a, I'm a Black African and I was doing my studies in, in Europe. And so because of that experience, a lot of the times I was often the only African in the room, the only Black person in the room. And sometimes that really fed into my imposter syndrome because I didn't have a lot of role models from my background, you know. So that made me feel quite insecure um, because doing scientific research isn't really something that's a viable career option where I'm from. Um, so with this in mind, when I started my PhD, I was, I, by the time I did my PhD, I was a little bit more confident by during my master's, I really went through a period of questioning myself um, and not really feeling seen and represented in, in the spaces that I was. That was kind of the context that then when I started my PhD, I got very engaged um, with actually with academic Twitter. So Twitter is actually a great place to meet other academics. I got very engaged in Twitter and I started finding different communities like Black in STEM, like women in STEM, neuroscientists, different communities, but they didn't seem to be a community for Africans specifically. Um, and I saw that was a, like a gap that existed. Um, so I just kind of got the idea, like, hey, if this doesn't really exist, maybe I can be the one to, you know, create something uh, for for this particular community that I'm a part of. So that's really how it started as an idea. It was just being inspired by all these other organizations that existed and seeing that gap based off my own experiences. And I think what really then cemented it was my co-founder, whose name is also Natasha, coincidentally. <laughs> um, it's actually quite a strange story. We were basically the same person, but no, we're not. Uh, we have the same name. We both lived in five countries. We both grew up in Botswana, but we didn't know each other at all. She's um, also a biologist, or 
she's she's a scientist. She's doing she's doing a PhD. Her background was in biology, but now it's more digital health and physics. Um, but we're both doing PhDs. We're at the same kind of the same time of our PhDs as well. So it's a little bit like crazy uh, when you think about the coincidence. And we met via Twitter. She. She saw a post that I put up, actually her partner saw a post I put up talking about myself in some shape or form. And he said to her saying, hey, this person sounds so much like you. And she read it and she's like, wow, no, she really does. So she just decided to spontaneously message me and say, hey, I know this is random, but my name is also Natasha and uh, I'm also doing a PhD and I also grew up in Botswana. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's wild. <laughs> um, and then I just, for whatever reason, just kind of told her, um, about this idea to start some kind of community because she had expressed that she always wanted to give back to the community that she grew up in in Botswana but didn't really have an avenue to do that so I was like hey since you're interested in doing something like that this is an idea I had and then she was immediately like okay let's let's do it together like if you're interested I have these particular expertise I'm very good with digital stuff with which you get code uh, with design whereas I don't have any experience or much experience with those things so she really then came in with the skill sets that I truly needed in order to start actually making this into something that was tangible so that was kind of just how it happened it was quite a bit of like random just aunt, you know meeting somebody online and she's in Australia by the way so we've never met still up until this point but we've been working together for over a year now so it's pretty pretty incredible and uh, how long do you operate right now with the, with the VSA? Sorry? Uh, how many times, uh, uh, what is the debt of Penn Pound Foundation of VSA? What is, the, sorry, I'm, I'm not quite hearing you now. Yeah, sorry, what is, uh, what is the date, the date of the foundation of the foundation of VSA? The state of the foundation? Yeah. In terms of how we're, how we're running it or? Yes, exactly. How many, how many times are you running uh, the, this adventure? Yeah, so we've been running it, technically we've been running it since uh, January of 2020. And essentially the the way it works, or what, how it worked in the beginning was my co-founder and I, uh, we wanted to be able to share stories of people and kind of create a platform where Africans and STEM can connect and find each other. And also our website could act as a resource. What we did is we found Africans and STEM to profile, um, to talk about their journeys. Um, so we would reach out to people curate the information and put it on our website um, and beyond that besides just the stories we also um, would curate the page for opportunities which is stuff like scholarships fellowships mentorship opportunities um, as well as uh, a page for a blog that's how it kind of started so that was just between my co-founder and I but over time because we actually got a lot of traffic on our website a lot of people who were interested in what we were doing um, we ended up getting requests for we, we became kind of like a hub that connects people or organizations uh, to other people organizations. So for example, if you're looking specifically for a Nigerian in astrophysics, we tend to have a connection who can probably find us that specific person. So we've kind of become like a, yeah, like a, kind of like these, these companies that can, can recruit people, um, so to speak. And then we started also doing events as well. So we started doing, um, we had like a mental health campaign, for example, where we got people to present and talk about mental health, uh, particularly as it pertains to Africans. And then most notably last year, we had a conference, which was really successful. We had a virtual conference that had um, 280 attendees from all over the world. Um, it was pretty great. Um, by that time we had expanded our team. So my co-founder and I found uh, or other individuals who are also based all over the world. They're all uh, African women as well who are in science, based in the US, the UK. And they um, help us in like social media, in creating the events, in creating content. So at this particular moment, we mostly function as an organization that creates content and shares it with people. We connect people and we create events um, just to continue to kind of promote the message of um, inclusivity and representation of Africans in STEM. And we're constantly trying to find new ways to do that. And now we're at a stage where again we want to be registered so we can do that more now in a sustainable way and start actually getting some funding so we can do bigger and better projects. So uh, you you connect and you promote uh, and will you plan also to educate? I don't know for educating for public speaking or entrepreneurship or I don't know what else. 
Absolutely. I think that would be fantastic, especially in the future, once we, we have registered and, and we have more resources and we've expanded our team because, you know, it's one thing, of course, to like promoting is great and sharing stories is amazing, but we ultimately want to also empower the people that you know, we're promoting because the reality is a lot of Africans don't have the same access that, you know, um, people from other places in the world do. So by creating, for example, like opportunities for entrepreneurship or, or exposing them, getting um, people with the expertise because the, the advantage that I have and my, my team has, and we're very internationally able to gain a, a lot of networks, you know, being part of the University of Luxembourg um, incubator, for example, gives me this access to this huge network of people. So I can now bring that expertise to the people who I want to empower. So that's definitely something we want to do in, in the future and get people who will be willing to share their expertise to be able to build this community, as you said, entrepreneurship, public speaking, um, even in the core sciences themselves as well, because sometimes people don't really have access to the resources, the textbooks, you know, um, there's limitations in resources for some people. And for me, that's, that's really my passion, because I know the reality of what it is like there. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of opportunities and to come to Europe and have this amazing education. Not everyone will have that same opportunity, but some are just as brilliant uh, or, or more, you know. So uh, we want to just make things more equitable as far as we can. Um, so if I will understood, uh, you connect uh, African scientists all around the world. Right? Or, uh, to, to your organization so they can connect, network, and promote, etc. Um, do you actually uh, have a, a view on uh, scientists who work right now in Africa? Because, for example, uh, I know the, the, bio, the, the research in, in, bi, in, in biology in Senegal is very good, very good. Uh, you know, they work in collaboration with the, uh, with the Institute. Um, Hospitalier uh, Université of Mediterranean with Professor Raoult. I think mm -hmm. we have heard they are very good, they are world class uh, researchers. You have very, uh, of course, you have to look at each country and they yeah. all have their, their specialties and, and expertise. Uh, do you have, uh, do you turn your mic to, to the scientists who work right now in, in Africa? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we try our best, really, first of all, when we promote the profiles to have a balance between Africans on the continent and those abroad, because we also don't want to perpetuate the narrative that to be a successful scientist, you have to leave the continent. You know, that's not the point. In, in fact, we actually want people to go back and be able to you know, bring back the skills that they gain outside back. So we do have a couple of um, people um, who are actually doing great work. We actually have two people in our community who, who have founded biotechnology institutes. One is in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. uh, and the Biotech Institute actually this year, and they're um, they're doing things with you know um, genome editing to try and create like drought resistant crops and such, doing different diagnostics using different research tools and and, and um, technological tools to like improve wastewater treatment and these kinds of things. Um, and then there's another um, gentleman who's been in Ghana and they have a biotech institute for um, cancer, so cancer research um, and such. So we, we're really trying to strengthen these kinds of relationships. Um, actually, both of these people spoke at our, at our um, conference last year, which was great, um, and just maintain these relationships with them because ultimately also if somebody's interested in these fields and it's great to know that there is research actually being, doing, being done on the ground that they can have access to. Um, so I think it's really important also for the worldwide community to also be aware of the fact that there are research institutes in, in Africa that are also doing relevant work because I think you know in science collaboration is key, right? Um, so I think by by amplifying what they're doing, just basically we're just acting like a loudspeaker, like they, they're already doing amazing work, but sometimes people aren't so great at communicating this, you know, um, on a large scale. So we kind of help people be able to share their stories on a wider scale. And hopefully this will ultimately you know facilitate eventually more collaborations more you know people wanting to even fund research in africa because they see the value um in that there's also uh, uh another uh, act that could be very interesting is uh, you know uh endemic uh, plants and molecules that we can find endemic plants mm -hmm. in africa because you have fantastic uh, um, uh, particularity for, for the for the 
environmental uh, condition. Just like you know, yeah, there is uh, actually uh, you have uh, collaboration with uh, with Brazil and other South American countries for to finding endemic plants and you know searching for uh, very rare uh, molecules that could be used yeah. for pharmaceutical. Uh, is there something like that with the with the, with the, with the African countries? You know, that's actually a great question. To the best of my knowledge, I haven't come across one yet, but I'm pretty sure if, um, you know, as, as time goes on, we meet more people, we'll probably find some. And if there isn't, then I hope someone starts because as you said, you know, a lot of natural resources, on, it's, a, it's a continent, you know, there's so many natural resources. And I think there is sometimes some validity to, you know, even some, some of the plants and herbs that have been used, you know, in traditional medicine, where sometimes maybe the molecular mechanism is entirely understood. So we kind of need to start to better, you know, understand, okay, why does this herb actually work for this? So there probably is some, you know, um, some validity in that. Um, but that's something I haven't um, come across yet, but I'm, I'm sure as time goes on, because of course we've met so many different people from all over the continent every day. I'm, and I really, that's one thing I personally think of about the work that we get to do is getting to read all the amazing work and the stories because so much people are doing such interesting stories. Exactly. Yes. It's an endless. Uh, you have an endless source of stories uh, to share and to. Exactly. It's so inspiring. You know, people have gone through all sorts of hoops and had to jump all sorts of you know things, but the, what they've been able to do sometimes with such little resources is also so impressive. So for me, it's one of the like the best things about what I get to do is reading all these stories and getting inspired and trying to find connections. There've even been some, there's, a, there's an organization that was actually birthed some sort of through the fact that our organization existed. Somebody who was part of our community met someone through our platform and they decided to create their own organization that specifically focuses on empowering women um, in Ghana to get into STEM and stuff. So for us, when we get that feedback that, hey, you inspired us to start this thing and I got to meet people through the platform, this is exactly the kinds of things that we're hoping that we can, can facilitate. Uh, Africa is also uh, very interesting in terms of marine biology. Yeah, that's uh, true. Uh, I, I think uh, you, you can find many, many new things by exploring just you know, the, the coastal uh, water and uh, animals and vegetal and vegetal and many, 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 many resources to explore and to, to discover. Yeah, absolutely. And we're lucky we already have quite a few people who are in marine biology, oceanography, Africa. There's a couple of people from uh, Mauritius as well, who are now part of a community, really doing a lot of work in, in that in that regard. So what we're actually hoping to do, um, also in collaboration with another initiative called Africans in STEM, um, it's based in, it's kind of a student association, but I think they're kind of becoming their own entity in Cambridge. Um, and we want to do a networking event later on this year where we actually bring people in similar fields where Africans in STEM to bring all the marine, you know, ocean biology in one, one Zoom room, bring the virologists, you know, um, and kind of get them to start talking because I think a lot of like interesting projects or ideas and connections can be formed. So yeah, now that we've kind of grown our community a bit, we can now start seeing if we have enough of these people from this field, maybe we can put them in a room together and see see what happens. Uh, do you plan also uh, to become a, a funding agency by yourself? If we could, that would be amazing. Because like, I would love to be able to, you know, my co-founder I've talked about even like providing scholarships even to like, you know, um, the really academic students who do, you, you know, engineering or, or coding or something. But the times finances is really a big barrier for a lot of people. So. Yes, I, I was thinking about that because you know when I was uh, um, searching about the ESA and uh, about the interview, I was looking also about the uh, the African American scientists who are some of them are rock stars such as Neil deGrasse and many others. You have a list, uh, endless list of fantastic scholars who are very known, famous, and, and accomplished. Uh, you have also many entrepreneurs there in the United States who can, can become a, um, uh, how can I say, a uh, mission in French in English could be a uh, benefactor, no? For an agency such as yours. And uh, did you try to connect with uh, this kind of with, with, with scientists in, in the United States? Uh, African-American descendants who are very famous, such as Neil deGrasse, but there are many others. 
Yeah, so um, we, I think we do have some support from some, actually one thing that was great in the first year was actually some of these, really, like at least especially science communicators who were a little bit bigger, they really shared what we were doing and that really also helped to boost what we were doing. But I do think that we probably need to um, probably stronger relationships with some of these organizations because they also are uh, a resource that we could use and leverage also what they've been able to do because um, I think it's also important that the work that we're trying to do is being done in, in other like exact for for example for African Americans you know there are these, all these black in like in ex communities that exist um, and actually we're for example now creating a collaboration with uh, black in neuro which is black in neuroscience which really was successful last year. They started last year, you know, when the pandemic happened and everyone was at home. A lot of these organizations started and they really had a lot of success in, in creating their organization. And they got a lot of sponsorship um, from different like um, STEM like companies and, and biotechs and such. And they approached us saying, okay, we, we want to also see how we can help Africa specifically because of course, like African-Americans and Africans have a lot of shared experience, but also a lot of different experiences and sometimes different barriers and such. But if we work together, then we can probably achieve more than you know working in a fragmented way. I think VSA, we're very much we very much believe in collaboration. Like we're not trying to to you know be the one who does everything because we see that a lot of people are doing amazing things. So if we can bring all these people together and work with them and form good relationships, we think that actually ultimately will benefit everyone at the end of the day. So, uh, maybe we could talk about a little bit about how uh, the University of Luxembourg with its program, uh, the entrepreneurship program or the incubator or both have helped you to, to bring this idea to, to life? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, I'm really grateful to the, to the program, to, to Pranjo and the whole team. They've really been supportive. Um, interestingly, I joined the Nathan camp um, program that they have at the beginning of last year. So it's just before the pandemic, thank goodness. So I got to have the, the actual in-person event um, and the ideation camp, you know, it's this three day intensive thing. You're just thrown in a room with a bunch of people you've never met and you need to come up with a business idea and, you know, actually think it through, like how will this be sustainable? What's your business model? What are you actually, you know, um, creating? So I participated in that and um, through that experience, um, that's when I actually realized, you know, the opportunities that were offered at the incubator. I got to meet a lot of, you know, even people within the Luxembourg ecosystem, in the business ecosystem. And um, I actually found um, the person who I then asked to become my mentor due to that um, uh, event. So um, my mentor was, was a mentor during the event. So he was someone I really gelled with. I really liked the way he, he thought and the way he probed questions. So I just approached him after the event and said, hey, I have this idea that I'm doing, uh, would you want, like to be a mentor? And he was super enthusiastic. So yeah, shout out to Philip Grother. He's really great. Um, but then, so from, from there, then after that, I also approached Pranjo and I said, um, I have this idea of visibility today and we have already launched, but we really would like some support. You know, having the backing of the university incubator would be very helpful. Um, and also the structure of the entrepreneurship program as well, because, you know, they can really help you formulate where are you really as an initiative? Where do you need to be? And then they provide, you know, the different, um, they can provide mentors who can help you at the particular stage that you are. And also I think as a, as kind of a, an accountability partner, right? Because of course, um, both my co-founder and I are doing a PhD. So um, there is that little of, you know, trying to prioritize how to do the PhD and then do this extracurricular thing. So having some, Something that keeps you accountable, you know, the, the, the program, it really keeps you kind of focused and know what you need to do. So we officially joined the um, entrepreneurship program. I think it was about June, about this time last year. Um, and we were provided with mentors who, you know, were really helping us try and iron out the kinks that we have at the moment with what we're trying to do, actually really figure out what are we actually trying to do? How can we make it sustainable? What are the legal implications, you know, all these things, because we are scientists, I'm a neurobiologist, you know, now I'm getting into completely different, you know, which I love. For me, I think it's amazing because now I'm learning so many other skills that I probably would not learn solely from doing my PhD, you know. Um, that's great. So the, the, the support and the mentorship, 
you know, they always have events as well um, about finance, about, you know, pitching and all these things. So I think just the amount of resources that they pump into us is amazing, but also the way that they believe in us and, you know, whatever I like suggest to Pranjul, he's like, yes, we can do it. You know, the, the enthusiasm, because sometimes you just need that yes, somebody to just believe that what you're doing, you know, it's, it's, it's something of value and something that can be something, you know, sometimes that's the push that you need. So I'm so grateful. And, you know, we, we, we have an office there and stuff, which allows us to have an address and all these things. And, um, you know, that would have been so much more difficult for me to try and find some office space, but they provide that for us as well. So I think that it's such, a, such an amazing thing that they have. I think um, I'm really, really grateful. I think many of the startups would probably agree with me that just having, having access to this and the caliber of people we have access to is incredible. It's just, it's just such, a, such a great thing. Very, very nice to hear. Um, so what's the future for you? Is it to completely uh, commit for the development of ESA? Or will you continue your scientific career because you are working on a very hot topic subject? Uh, so just for the audience, I will remind what you do. You uh, transform, induce pluripotent stem cells into mini brain, and you study uh, Parkinson right now. Yeah. Um, how uh, we can uh, the, the biology of Parkinson, the physiopathology of Parkinson, this uh, mini brain in culture. Uh, so it's a very hot topic uh, uh, subject and. This can open you, of course, a lot of doors. So what's the future for you? That is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's a tough one because I have to say I really love both of the things quite quite a lot. You know, I'm I really I'm I'm very ha happy that I ended up in Luxembourg to do my PhD. It's been a very positive experience. I know PhDs can go in so many different directions. I'm very grateful that mine has gone in the positive direction. And I'm in my third year now and I'm still smiling. So I think that's a that's a good sign. Um, to be honest, at the moment, um, I have to say, I, I, I'm just focused on, okay, I need to finish my PhD because I'm in my PhD right now. Um, and in the meantime, you know, we're, we're growing disability STEM Africa in kind of a steady way. You know, I'm not trying to do too much too fast because I also understand that I have to be practical about how I do things because I have the limitation of, I am a full-time so it's really like what, what my co-founder and I really were trying to be strategic in our timelines, like what can we actually achieve in the next two years? And in two years time, when we're at this place, I think we can make a more solid decision whether we continue the way we're doing now, like we continue the postdoc and, you know, we just expand our teams so that of course we can be leaders and the ones kind of you know, overhead, but we have people who are doing the day-to-day -day taking care of it. Because I think this initiative, it's bigger than me or my co-founder. It's something that is very community driven. And if we can just provide kind of the, the foundation for it to be strong, I think whether or not I decide to be the one to continue it, as long as it continues, that's what's important to me. Exactly. It can, it can, it can continue by itself as a, as a professional organization. Exactly. So for me, that's what I want to just make sure that we create that foundation, um, regardless of whether I am the one to continue it or not should be, you know, it's, it, it'll be besides the point. That will really be now a more personal decision based off where I am in March 2023 when I have my defense. Um, but it'll always be a passion project for me. Like this is, again, you know, sometimes people do things because, you know, I want to make money and all these things. And that's great. And, you know, money, you know, it's important. But for me, because of my background and because I know how many people this can trust, it will always be something I'm invested in. And I think I'll always somehow be working to make sure that people from where I'm from have better access to opportunities and can, can do what I'm doing, basically, you know. Um, and I'll, I'll always make sure I find ways to do that, um, whether I'm inside or outside academia. Uh, just another question about the GSA and the African connection. Is there any um, uh, interest or, or, how can I say, from the local uh, African government you know, to, to, to see what you do as a scientist around the world and see, guys, uh, now you have PhD or postdoc, uh, we are very interested in what you do. To, uh, is there something like that for, for you or um, um, the country, of course, there's some country for, for, for which the science is very important for those less, etc. Yeah, it's a very, like, like you just said, it's a very country specific thing for sure. Um, we, we, we had actually, I was even um, approached by someone from, from the Belgian embassy of Zimbabwe 
um, talking about, you know, wanting to hear more about what we're doing and how we can help students in, in Zimbabwe who maybe want to come to Europe and specifically study STEM. Um, but I think that's that's also once once we've registered, that's something we want to more actively engage in because the reality is I think a lot of the barriers and issues kind of come from the top in a lot of countries in Africa, you know. Um, the same everywhere. <laughs> anywhere really um, and if we want to start to really change things we need government support you know we need them to see the importance of why we're even doing this in the first place why it's actually beneficial for them because it, it is beneficial for governments to invest in them, the amount of you know development that will occur and the truth is Africa has so much untapped talent and a lot of untapped resources so this feels like it's actually the best time to really be investing in, in STEM professionals and then, you know, people who can code and people who have the, um, the kind of mindset of, you know, being able to follow the scientific process in order to address challenges, you know. Um, when we, often when we're like presenting visibility STEM um, to, to people and trying to make people aware of why this is an issue, you know, one of the things we have is uh, a stat that, I, that we found that um, Africa has 16, about 16.7% 16 of the world population but con contributes less than one percent of the global research output. You know that that that's that's that is alarming in and of itself, right? And these um, this global research um, effort it's important for development. You know, a lot of places don't have like clean running water, electricity issues, climate change is the reality everywhere. So I think we need governments to actually sit down and be like, okay, this is an important thing, and we need we need these professionals because they're losing a lot of them abroad. Like most of us, most of my friends who did what I doing, they left the country, you know, they left Zimbabwe, which is not a good thing. So how can we, you know, engage them and real make them realize, okay, we need to make sure that these people feel valued and they're getting, you know, the appropriate amount of pay. And of course there's a lot that goes behind that. It's not, a, not an easy thing, but it, we have to start somewhere. You know, it's, we have to make that change. So definitely once we're registered, I think we'll also be in a position where people will have some more respect as well for what we're doing because we're a registered entity and sustainable and stuff. So this is definitely one of the long-term goals because things need to change. And of course, we'll, we'll, we'll pick and choose which countries. Um, some will probably be easier. And once you have, you know, your foot in, you can always then try and, and expand that. Absolutely. There is, a, you have built uh, with the, the VSA one, one of the major pieces of the puzzle which is uh, the STEM, a promoting STEM. Uh, there's also two other um, pieces of the puzzle, which is entrepreneurship and startup to bring the innovation to life. And the third one is uh, the benefactor, the money, of course. Yeah. So I wish you to, to, to build all these pieces together and make it together because it's yeah. very important for Africa, but also for the world. Yeah. Um, so let's conclude now. It was a real pleasure to have you. And if, uh, if you could offer one advice to a young student, uh, African or not, uh, who wants to follow your path as a scientist and as an entrepreneur, what, what, would, be, what would it be? Um, I would say um, if, if something doesn't scare you just a little bit, it's probably not worth it. It's <laughs> If something scares you a little bit, you know, the, the first opportunities usually seem a bit terrifying, but if it wasn't terrifying, it probably wouldn't be a great opportunity. So don't run away from the things that seem a little bit scary. This is excellent. This is excellent. I will keep it for myself. <laughs> Thank you, Natasha. It was a real pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you very much. I will follow up yesterday cheerfully and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.